Hi there. Hey, how are you? Okay, how are you doing? I'm just having the time of my life. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> it's so shocking to see that screen on your side as well as on my side. Yes. <laughs> oh, my word, it's been a couple of interesting months. Yeah. How's work? Are you busy? Um, surprisingly so, yeah. <laughs> it was a period in January where things had slowed down. I was actually enjoying the the time just to decompress after what yeah. had been a very intense fall. And in to to just put this in perspective, last God, it's so recent, it's hard for me to believe. A week ago, Monday, mm -hmm. I was talking to a colleague on a volunteer project I'm doing, and he told me about a conference that's going to be here in Jan in March. And so I went online to look at it, realized the submission date for proposals was the next day, put in a proposal that morning, two hours later, got accepted. And I thought, well, that's fast. Wow. So feeling kind of piggish, I put in a second proposal and that one was accepted the next day. So a conference I didn't even know about two weeks ago, I'm doing two presentations at here in San Francisco. In wow. March. It's going to be lovely. It's the collegiate media. Um, I don't, they're not a consortium, I guess an association. Mm -hmm. the advisors as well as the students who work for college papers and I think you know I've been involved now for a while with the Daily Brew and Alumni Network so I'm working with the students down there doing workshops for them and mentoring programs and stuff like that Aww. it's the chance to actually get my feet back into into my starting point in my career where I did work as a newspaper reporter for a couple of years now I'm going to be at a conference that yeah oh it's so sweet I'm really having a good time with it that's great well, you're, Karen, you're able to hear us okay? Maybe. <laughs> she was having problems with her computer, decided it wanted to update itself just before we logged in. We cannot see or hear you. At least we know you're there. Yes. <laughs> Karen, are you able to hear us? Yeah, she's able to hear us. Okay, good, good. That's a good starting point. <laughs> <laughs> what in the world is exactly the question to ask about 20 minutes before a presentation? <laughs> all gone so far in advance going, all right, let's troubleshoot this sucker. I don't think it was a muting problem. I see you're muted now, Karen, but originally you were not. So let's just walk ourselves through this. Are you able, moving your cursor around, to put it in the lower left-hand corner? Oh, you have your headset on, good. Are you able to move your cursor around and see little icons pop up in the lower left? One of them has a stop and start video button. Good, if you click on start video, that should get your image running. And if not, then Crystal's just gonna troubleshoot because she's smarter than I am. Mm. You see how rumors start, Crystal? Yeah. Karen? <clears throat> there you are. Welcome to California Library Advocacy Series that is monthly Wednesdays, 10 a.m., generally to 11.30 a.m. Pacific time. Our topic today, as you know, is Day in the District. For those of you watching the recorded version, we have this introductory slide, which is the only slide you're gonna to have to suffer through today. I want you to have a chance to read it. So we're gonna go silent for about 20 or 30 seconds. If you're watching the archive version, don't test your sound. You'll know when we're, when we're back because this, the slide will be down and we'll be talking. Okay, that's about the most painful 30 seconds you're going to have in the entire episode. Now we're live and in color. Again, welcome. So good to see all of you here. It's wonderful to be with fellow advocates talking about what, what makes our work interesting and what makes us better. I'm going to start off with a line that Yolande, who's one of our panelists, shared the other day when we were talking about what we wanted to get into here. When we talk about day in the district, it's easy to define. And when we say it's library advocacy via video conference, or in person, and it happens in late February, early March. So that's the very beginning. Again, promise you no lecture. So we're just going to dive in with some stories to get to set the tenor here. Our panelists, uh, we're going to start with 
Yolande, who is the director in Santa Cruz, California, a uh, great colleague of ours on the Library and Advocacy Committee. Yolande, why don't you start us up with a story that get, for you captures the spirit of what Day in the District is and does. Sure. Um, really, Day in the District is an opportunity for us all to really connect with our legislators. Um, I highly recommend, and I'm sure Deborah and everybody here will recommend, that you include your friends, your foundations, your commissioners, your boards in this opportunity. And this is a great way, if you're looking for something for your boards and commissioners to do, assign them this, because this is where the rubber meets the road and a lot of our advocacy our legislators want to hear from citizens, right? We do this every day, but when you bring in those commissioners who they may already know in many respects, um, they can really help to boost your program attendance, but also funding for your library. Um, just one quick story that I have. So um, this occurred when I was at Torrance um, and we were all hit with uh, COVID during that period. There was no opportunity to really meet with legislators in person, and so we had to do it via Zoom. So we really, uh, I connected with libraries in my area, and we decided we were going to set a meeting together with our commissioners. Each library had their commissioners or board members attend. And in one of our meetings in particular, we had just begun doing a survey because with COVID, we had closed libraries and we're really looking to reopen our libraries, but we didn't know what hours are people going to come? What you know, kind of services are they going to want from us? Do they want us to continue virtual programming? And so we had a survey that we had put out a few weeks before we did, we're doing our day in the district, just on our website, and we pushed it out on our social media. And so we met with one of our legislators, and during that call, that Zoom call, we actually talked with them about determining what our hours should be, and we really needed public input for this. They actually reposted our slides. They asked for our slides for with our survey information. So after being open for a few weeks, we only had only had like 200 responses. We had them post, and we ended up with over a thousand responses in three days. So that's the power of connecting with your legislators, right? We got better survey results than we've ever had in sending out any surveys across the board. Um, so that's just one great story that I have. So I'd love to hear from other people. Wonderful. Thanks, Yolan. I'm going to move over to Deborah Doyle, a longtime colleague of mine, friend from the days when we were both at San Francisco Public. She moved on as an advocate with the Friends of the Library in San Francisco. Moved on. I, I think you're still involved with Friends of the Library, right, Deborah? Uh, friends of the library everywhere. I okay, I... <laughs> good. And that was going to be the next point. That's she right. works at the national level now, doing advocacy work with our colleague Ray Pun through the American Library Association. So you can see why we're excited to have Deborah here. Deborah, story that captures captures for you the spirit of Day in the District. Well, I can remember um, uh, one meeting in particular, and this was pre pre COVID. Um, but but in San Francisco, we brought. Um, a black man who had learned to read through our literacy program. And I have to say, it was the most powerful conversation with a legislator and a staff member that I have ever seen. Um, they, they truly then wanted to, and that led into a conversation about, um, about what other resources and, and what other underserved communities the library actually serves. And and what's great about some of these meetings, whether it's on Zoom or whether it's in person, is <laughs> in addition to usually we ask uh, legislators something or get to know them, but but you can also offer them things that they don't know about. Do they know that you have a veterans program? Do they know all of the things that you're doing? And then um, uh, and and if you're working with other library systems, it's it's a wonderful time to make sure that they understand what you're doing. But um, you, they should also always be on your mailing lists. They should be invited to everything that you do. You should make sure that you provide opportunities for them to, especially the legislators, keep keep in touch with the staff because they're the ones that are going to get you in. But um, but making sure that uh, that a legislator has an opportunity to have a photo opportunity um, 
in a safe space. Nobody's going to ask him really hard questions or her hard questions. Um, and uh, and they get to love the library because because most of them do. That's about it for me. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Amelia. And finally, our, our partner, Crystal Miles, who is a familiar face to you if you've come to any of these sessions in the past. She also has moved up into the co-chair position on California Library Association's Legislative and Advocacy Committee this year and is making us work even harder than ever. Crystal said up front that she has not had firsthand experience with Day in the District, but does bring so much advocacy experience that we're kind of changing the question a little bit to get her introductory story, which is, a story about an advocacy situation where you've interacted with legislators and seen some of the positive come out of it. Crystal? Sure, yeah. So I did want to start off by saying, as you mentioned, that this is my first time actually participating in Day in, Day in the District. And I want to note that Day in the District is kind of a misnomer, um, that it's really, you know, once you set your appointment, it, it is your day. And so you make the best of that day, but um, it can be, you know, probably run throughout a couple of weeks. Um, so for me, you know, something I focus on is really that personal connection and the relationship building. And, you know, I was thinking about it as I'm setting up the, the spreadsheet that you all will have access to where you can find out what, you know, lawmakers are in your area, that um, Angelique Ashby, who's a new state senator, um, she used to be on the Sacramento City Council. And so, and she was also on our library board. And so we, you know, every every month that we would meet with them, we really tried to um, make our make ourselves shine and share those stories that are showing the real impact from the library. And um, and then we also we experienced a, a tragedy with a staff person a few years ago, and it was in her district. And so that you know tied her to us even more. And the point of this is like we don't know always the trajectory of someone's careers. And, and now, you know, she's a state senator, she still is passionate about the library and what we do. And she's carrying that into her, um, her bigger job. And as, as Deborah mentioned, you know, making relationships with the, the staff that support your lawmakers, because they may end up in that role at some point. And we see that happen a lot here in, in the Sacramento area. And now it's kind of a game, you know, like there's a staff person that's really strong go-getter and we're like, okay, we're going to watch them. We want to make sure that, that we are really connecting with them um, because, you know, we're excited to see where they go. Um, so keep that in mind as you're um, building those relationships and just kind of your everyday interactions with your um, your council members. And I know systems are set up differently with boards, but um, that can have some overlap as well. And then when you set up these meetings, um, you know, bring those past experiences you've had with them or those connections into that conversation and make uh, reconnect with them in that person to person way. And that kind of goes a long way. Thank you. And to draw a perfect bow on all of this, I'm going to lay out a theme that I think is going to come up many times during the conversation today, which is what Crystal was starting to allude to there, the importance for those long-term relationships and not just with the legislators themselves. A lot of times the access there is through the legislative aides in a particular office. The story I can tell briefly is working on a four-year project here in San Francisco. We needed to have the involvement of our county supervisor. We needed to have the involvement of a lot of local business people. And at a certain point, we we're going to need approval from the county board of supervisors for the project we were going for. We learned early on who the legislative aides were, and they were the people that got us to the right supervisors whenever we needed them. They also made sure that other people who were going to be in the approval process knew about that project. And the funniest part of all that came that the project had such good recognition by the time we were close to needing the approvals that one morning I realized we were stuck on a basic thing of needing the mayor's signature on something, and I got very lucky. I went to my local coffee shop that morning, and there was the mayor sitting about three tables away in what was a basically empty coffee shop. It was me, it was him, and I realized quickly that what he was doing was holding 15-minute conversations with people. He was doing his own day in the district in the coffee shop out where I lived. So I saw the timing on that, and I called the waiter over. And I said, he's going to have about two minutes between this conversation and his next one could you seat me at a table close to him? Like the place is empty. So he moves me over. I'm sitting at a table or two away from the mayor. That wonderful moment came in. I told him what we needed. He says, here's a card. You call this person, tell him to put that document on my desk today. And we got the signature. That's what that long-term kind of planning does. But don't wait around to find those elected officials in your coffee shop. Just be ready to hop on them when they happen. And if you need to, to 
let people know when you're stuck in something and it's important to you and to that legislator, know who to contact and do it at the right time. And just a follow up, please. Um, Crystal, Crystal mentioned that, you know, those promotions happen. It also happens. One of the things that I learned when I got to San Francisco and my dad had worked for the federal government. So I sort of knew about federal stuff. But when I got to San Francisco, it became very clear that everything is connected. So the local is connected to the regional, connected to the state, connected to the national. So some of these folks that you get to know are going to also be at the national and federal dollars are incredibly important to libraries. So you have to have to remember that and make sure that you make sure that you connect. And I will tell just a brief story about that. Um, in Sonoma County, we um, were working on a ballot measure and, um, and a young man got hired to put the signs out all along the um, all along the roads and things like that. And so then um, he um, went to graduate school in Washington, DC, and he got a job with one of our congressmen. And so I went in for a day in the district and was completely surprised to see him in the in the office, but he made introductions, you know, and so forth. And then he's back now and he's running a nonprofit, but he's always going to be interested in libraries because he put those signs on the side of the road. Thank you. All right, enough from us for the time being. We want to turn this back to all of you who are on the call now. Pick your brains, please. Think about something you've done at the legislative level, local, regional, national, and share this story with others as a reminder that we're all peers in this and that it doesn't take years and years of experience. It just takes the willingness to grab the opportunity. So anybody want to go first? So Paul, as people are deciding if they want to speak or not, um, I'll just add something because I, I think something that you talked about, like the the assistance and the aids, um, it's a really it's really important to cultivate that relationship. I can tell you um, when I first came here to Santa Cruz, I attended another event, it wasn't library related. It was about a, a affordable housing project, and I went out was on site. And so Senator Laird could not be there for that opening, but his aide was there. And so I was like, ah, Senator Laird, like, I need to talk to you. And I was like, here's my card. If you need to come to the library, you know, let us know if he wants to come and do a story time. We want you there. Thank you for supporting because I knew about the support that, that Senator Laird gave to libraries, and especially around infrastructure. And I was like, thank you for your support. We really just appreciate it. Um, and so from that reach out, then I ended up getting a call from that aide saying, hey, Senator's going to be in your area. He's got to do a Zoom call with Monterey, and we're supposed to be speaking someplace else. Can we use your community room at the Scotts Valley branch to, for him to hold his meeting so he's not late for the one where he's appearing in person? And I was like, you got it. We booked the room for him. And Senator Laird was sitting in our Scotts Valley library, waving at people as they looked at him. He was on a Zoom meeting with Monterey uh, Board of Supervisors. So, And that, Yolanda, is how you started your rental legislator for a day program, right? <laughs> absolutely. Our co-conspirators in learning here, those of you who are joining us for this session, what stories can you tell? Anybody? Oh, uh, maybe. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Yolan. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hey, Ray. Uh, good to see you. Yeah. Thanks for putting this together. Uh, it's really great to see all you here. So I am a librarian in the Bay Area. And um, previously, I've worked at um, the New York Public Library. And one of the things that we have done is work closely with the union and during, you know, legislative advocacy day and, and just bridging that sort of process, right? Because there's always Unfortunately, that, that tension between administration seeking funding and also the union folks may be seeing things differently with priorities, but to be on the same, same page with the uh, uh, government, government relations office and then going to Albany. And so this happened maybe uh, eight or nine years ago where I went to Albany and I was one of the union rep representatives too, but we were all aligned because the goal was to secure funding and to have uh, deeper connections with our constituents at the Capitol. And it was really great because I've never done it. And I worked with a couple of people who were experts and, and then they had all these really great experiences from the past. And then now we still like talk about different ways to communicate. So that's sort of like one story I wanted to share that, that sort of collaboration with different groups. And then the other story is using social media. So one of the things I, I'm part of as 
uh, an active member of the American Library Association as well as CLA is to really um, reach out and give a shout out to our federal representatives, so our senators who have supported bills that support uh, library initiatives and funding. So that might include acts like Build Back Better or the Infrastructure Act, which unfortunately some of them may not pass, but we know that our uh, Congress folks are working hard to get it passed to support libraries. And there's some sort of clause usually that um, provide funding or resources to libraries. And through social media, a, a way to sort of give them a shout out whether at Senator Dianne Feinstein or Alex Padilla, it, it really just highlights that we are watching, right? We are not just, um, you know, just sort of on the sideline and then just hoping that they would sign on, which they would, but then it's always a good boost to continue that momentum. And even at the house level too. So I just wanted to um, mention that if folks are using social media, you know, think about um, recognizing our um, supporters Thank you, Ray. This is a good time for me to pitch something for those of you that are not aware of it. California Library Association on its website has a whole advocacy site. And in, in, within that site, there's a page that leads you to some of the tools that we put together. I think last time I looked, we had 70 to 80 different links, everything from videos to storytelling. I bring that up because Ray, Deborah, Yolande uh, were all people that I interviewed in the first year of our Ursula Myers project a couple of years ago. And we have the uh, edited transcripts of the conversations where they talked about advocacy issues. So if you like the stories you're hearing from them today and you wanna to go back to that, A, feel free to do that after today's session and please share that with other people. We want those things out there as resources that are usable. So Ray, thanks just for being here, reminding me that we have that. Any other stories from people on the call that they wanna share as an example of what they've done so that others can learn from them and from you? Yeah, I'll share something. This Thank is you. Sean. Um, I've only done day in this district once. I really liked it, but we've not done it since. I'm going to try to set it up for this year. But uh, we have a holiday light parade. And this year I got to drive our Congresswoman in a convertible. And so I have her all to myself for about two hours. So it was like uh, very fascinating to hear her talk. And I got to talk about library things. So if you ever get a chance to drive in a parade, uh, I, I highly recommend it. I'm going to go sign up right now. That's a great idea. All right, so we've sort of danced around and given you the one-line description. Let's go a little deeper into Day in the District and how it's evolving. Yolanda, why don't you run with that one for us? Sure, happy to. So I talked a little bit about this earlier, that really Day in the District is an opportunity for us to really build relationships with our legislators. Uh, developing those relationships is really going to help to bolster our continuing funding as well as support for the programs and services that we provide. Um, you, as well as other library staff from all levels, and I really highly recommend that you think about this in terms of people at all levels, because when I first started doing day in the district work, I was a librarian one, new to libraries and LA County gave me the opportunity to uh, participate in the program. I worked with our uh, team at the county to print out flyers of programs that we were doing, really honed in on what was important to the legislators. Um, because again, they are trying to get support for things that they are doing. And this is our opportunity to support them as much as it is for them to support us. So I think really talking about the meetings, these are really, I think, Sean, you touched on this. These are friendly meetings. These are meant to be friendly. Hey, let me tell you a little bit about what we're doing at libraries. Um, I've participated in the, um, the uh, National Library Ledge Day in Washington, DC. I have the opportunity to participate in that. And one of the big things that I found is when I went in and was having these conversations, a lot of people are like, oh, my mom was a librarian, <laughs> right? A lot of the aides or the senators, they're like, my aunt is a librarian. My, you know, cousin is a librarian. So they want, they love libraries and many of them share then with us touching stories about kind of how libraries touched them in their lives as children, right? Because that's usually the first introduction or how in college, yeah, I, I hung out in the library. I didn't have, I was homeless because I was living in my dorm. 
and I would go to the library and study every day. So they really do want to support us. So it's in sharing those kind of friendly, common stories about what we do that really evokes those memories for them. And that's where we can really garner a lot of support. Um, one thing to remember, I think we touched on this, there are new legislators coming in, but many leg legislators have the potential to remain in office for 12 years or more. Um, and so building those relationships is really important. Um, to They sit on policy and budget committees. Um, and one of the things that I think CLA Leg Committee does a good job of we have a, 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 um, a library lobbyist for CLA, uh, Christina DeCaro, and she really works with us every year to say, hey, here are the key people we need you to talk to because this is the legislation that's coming through and we just really need strong advocacy with these people. So if, you're, if you get an email or a call saying, hey, and I'm gonna pick on you, Hilda, hey, Hilda, you know, your representative, we need them to vote a certain way for libraries. We're reaching out because we'd like you to reach out to that legislator as a local member of their district and really help to advocate for what we think is best statewide for, um, for libraries. Um, so again, many of the legislators you're going to meet, you want to, you know, kind of cultivate those relationships and then when we need to call on them, it's easier to get that appointment. It's easier for you to have that conversation. Um, and Crystal, I think, had mentioned before we came on live, it can be a little intimidating at first to go in and talk to legislators. But really, it's just about thinking about them as, um, I, I, I think, maybe not thinking about them, but thinking about what you're passionate about. And that's the libraries and the programs that you do and then just sharing that information. And that hopefully can take away a little of that intimidation um, because once you get started on that, they'll ask you questions because they wanna know what you're doing and how that's helping. And we know the people who we support um, and who we impact. And so it's those stories and that impact that you should share because that's gonna make it easier to communicate. Um, CLA uh, does day in the district. I, I kind of want to, I'll wrap up with this. So I'm not talking, I'm not the only one talking here, but CLA does day in the district as Crystal mentioned, you know, we usually start in February, March, but I have gotten meetings with legislators as late as May. And it's still important that you meet with them. Some legislators, you might not be able to get on their calendars. Um, it does often take months for you to get an appointment because they are very busy. It might be a really short meeting, 15 minutes or so, but if you, even 15 minutes is a great opportunity for you to advocate and share those stories of impact that you have. You just have to be a little bit more concise as you do it. And with that, I'll turn it back to you, Paul. And I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna duck here and say, Crystal, do you wanna add anything to that? Yes. Um, so, oh, we have, I think someone calling in. Actually, you've got some background music here. That's so cool. <laughs> Normally, we don't have a soundtrack. Um, you might be able to mute them, Paul. Um, but yeah, what I was going to say something... to Yolan's point. <laughs> we can still hear you, so go ahead okay, and kind of sure. hum along with the song. Um, so to Yolan's point that, you know, to not be discouraged if you can't get on their calendar, in, you know, by March, any time is fine starting that conversation with them and then you know making notes of what you spoke about and <laughs> i feel like i'm on an infomercial now um <laughs> in the background I'm asking Karen if she can okay. side. um and you know make notes and then you'll be prepared for next time you'll know exactly who you're you'll be reaching out to and then when you speak to them again next spring, you can pick up where you left off and say, hey, last time we spoke, I shared with you about our early learning programming. And here's what we're doing now, right? So to kind of rekindle that, that memory that they've already started building that relationship with you and then how to kind of continue, continue on from that point. Paul, I think you're muted. Okay, we haven't managed to kill the music, but we have managed. There we go. Okay, there we go. 
that was so lovely. Can we do that again? No, we don't want to. <laughs> there is a, a good point to be made here, as will always be the case when we have a, a mess up and we go, let's make some some points out of that. You go into your meetings with legislators, you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> that's you right. You have to roll with it. You. you saw how Crystal up front started to run with it. And then she asked if there was something we could do. When we couldn't do anything, we realized you could still hear her. And we went with it and we joked about it. You need to have those levels of chops up when you're talking to your legislators <laughs> and anybody else. Just go, most of you already have in your day to day to work. But remember to carry that with you and roll with the punches, you know, have a sense of humor about it and, and make the best out of a situation like that that you can. Crystal and Yolanda both said, you may only have 15 minutes with these legislators and you can't waste five or six of them saying, can somebody turn down the music? You just have to talk over right. it or make it part of your riff. And they will appreciate you too for that. So There's Paul, I wanted to point out, to? yeah, we actually have a question um, from Margo yes. in the chat, and it was about if CLA will provide what legislation to focus on in the meetings and talking points. So we will provide um, some basic talking points. We can also provide some um, general legislation that's, that's coming up or um, some things to focus on. So our legislators, as everyone knows, what their priority is, is their, their stakeholders, right? And serving what their constituents need and the majority of their constituents. A lot of folks, as we see in legislation that came up, that come up, they may not know exactly how libraries operate. And so even if something has a really good intention, um, you know, like there's one in the, the pipeline right now, um, uh, the opioid it's for Narcan use, which would be mandating Narcan can use in libraries. Um, that it, it's kind of the time to explain, you know, what you're doing, not, not to change heart and minds, right? Because that might not happen <laughs> in that 15 minutes, um, but to kind of plant some seeds of, of how things really operate, because then they're going to take that knowledge and that information directly from library staff when they're faced with those, um, those bills. Thank you. Deborah, anything you want to add? Um, yeah, I, just just a note that our lobbyists, um, Christina and her dad, who is now retired, have done a lot of work for us um, over the years. And we got, libraries got a lot of funding last year. Incredibly important to make sure that you thank them for that money. But that's not the end. We still want more funding. <laughs> so um, it's always helpful if you can say, this is what California um, dollars did for your district. That's always a very important thing to say. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and some other things, you know, you don't want to talk all the time. You want them to get, you want them to talk. You want, you want an elevator speech. You know, we talk about an elevator speech, just a brief way to describe what you want. If you want something, if this is just an introductory meeting, that's fine too. You're just letting them get to know you. That's also fine. Um, but make sure that um, make sure that it's brief so that they can, so that you can do some listening. You have to find out what they want, what they're interested in. If it's an assistant, you can ask, you know, what the boss is interested in, but you also want to find out what they're interested in too. Um, and you can do some of that research. We're librarians. We can do that, right? Um, also, don't bring too much information to the meeting because a lot of that goes in the round file. Um, if they ask for something that you don't have, you can say, I'll follow up with that. I can send you that. And you don't always have to know the information. That's that's one of the joys of being in our profession, right? Um, and follow up, follow up, follow up. Um, that this is this is only the beginning. If this is your first meeting with that with that person or with that or with that office, just consider it just the you know just the intro on the glide path. And one more thing, it would be wonderful if you if you find information that you think is going to be helpful. Please please let the California Library Association know or let the advocacy committee know or let um, Christina know um, because because she is there pounding the pavement. She does the pick and shovel work every day in Sacramento. And so it's, it, if there are new legislators and there are so many of them, additional information about them will be very helpful for uh, for her as a lobbyist. Sorry, Paul, I know I took more than two minutes. No, that's fine. This is okay. exactly what we're looking for here. And if there are things that we can help you out with in terms of training topics, shoot those topics to me and or Crystal and or Deborah. We're always looking for new topics that we can build into the series 
we're adding resources. Going back to the chat to catch up a little bit here, I put in a link to well, the- I'm just, I'm gonna interrupt you here because Please. I think a number of the questions that I'm seeing in the chat really are related to what kind of I'm gonna talk about in the next section. So I'm happy to just start, jump in and start that now. Um, so yes, there is, I don't know. Let me give the pitch here and then absolutely run with it because it's perfect. You'll see in the in the chat there, there is that link to the resource page. That goes back to what Crystal was talking about. There are a couple of rudimentary documents already at the top of that page that will help you with day in the district. There's also a link to locating your legislators. That's a really helpful thing. Yolande, I was just about to do that. So jump in with those questions and let's move on to the next section. Terrific. So I'm going to go through right now just a checklist that I created um, along with Mike Eitner a few years back. We really were co-chairs and worked on, hey, what does day in the district look like, especially in this time of COVID? So really, our structure was based on doing Zoom meetings or Teams meetings with the legislators because Christina DeCaro had, had let us know, hey, that's the best way to reach legislators. We can still do this. Um, so I'm going to follow that checklist. And Paul, if you could follow up and make sure that this goes out to participants as a, an additional document, that checklist, because I think it's really helpful. Great, so the first that. thing to do is really just to, um, as I said, day in the district can be done via teleconference, Zoom, or Teams, or, or in person. And so a lot of these same things apply. I highly recommend, one of the questions in the chat is, do you recommend partnering with neighboring jurisdictions? Absolutely. It's the best way for you to get in the door and the legislators, because their time is so tight, oftentimes you can get in, especially if they know multiple of their libraries are gonna be in that same meeting. Um, and so organize a group of library supporters. It's really the most effective way to include your trustees, commissioners, friends groups, foundation members. Um, they are going to be excited to participate and they're gonna bring another level to those appointments. If your legislator serves more than one public library system, make sure you're reaching out to those systems that are in that group. Um, and you might have cross in different zones. I know, you know, like three of the libraries in your area might be in one district, another one you might share with that one. So set it up with those two separate groups if you need to. I think that's really important with the different legislators. Um, designate one person to be the contact person. So once you've decided, hey, we're all going to group together, have one person reach out to that legislator to try and book the appointment and do the ask because you'll find that it's difficult to have multiple emails sent. They won't know who they're supposed to contact. So I highly recommend having one person as that point of contact. The legislators will want to know who's going to be in that meeting. They're not going to want to come into your meeting and not know who's there. So they'll tell them in advance, hey, this is going to be my uh, board member X, my librarian Y, my you know, friend of the library Z, they're all going to attend this meeting, right? Um, they will want to know who is going to be in that meeting. Um, and I find it really helpful to send each of those jurisdictions contact information as well via email. That way, if they have any issues, I've had concerns, like especially during COVID, hey, we might need to cancel tomorrow because we had something else come up they want to be able to reach out to the appropriate people. When you finalize the date, um, determine who's going to provide the Zoom link. You'll find sometimes legislators will say they're going to provide the Zoom link because that way they can make sure that meeting is secure. Um, so don't be offended if they say, nope, we'll give, you a, we'll give you the Zoom link, right? Just make sure that you follow up with them a couple of days ahead of time to ensure that that's the correct link and that everything's still a go. Um, Prior to meeting with your legislators, I recommend that you create a PowerPoint slide deck with key priorities. That's going to really help you stay on track. So CLA every year does our CLA legislative priorities. You can focus on those and you can even just take them in that order. Um, I've done this where I did a slide deck and like if the priority is a million extra dollars, right, for lunch at the library, which we got, by the way, yay. <laughs> Um, but lunch at the library, and that could be your first slide, right? And then have one of the jurisdictions that's participating in that meeting 
focus on talking about lunch at the library. Maybe they do that program and so they can add some maybe photographs in that slide. I recommend you go very light on words. Don't do a lot of written words on the slides. It's more about photographs of the programs and then maybe some highlights that you've done. Like we served at, you know, at Sacramento Public, we had, you know, 5,000 kids come to our lunch at the library. You might want to highlight that, especially if you have your commissioners or your board members talking about this in your stead um, because you want them to participate um, just to really hit the highlights. Each library that's participating can take a slide or each friend member or board member could take a slide um, to talk about their jurisdiction. Um, again, use those CLA priorities as your template. That'll help keep things organized on track and then limit the time that people are speaking. Schedule a Zoom meeting with that, that group, with your group, because you wanna have them practice, do a run through once you get your slides all in order. Have them do a run through. Um, I found that sometimes with our, our commissioners, they might get a little frustrated, frustrated and, and want to go on and on and talk about the good things. But we have to kind of say to them, OK, that's great. But we, we know we need only you, can, you only get two minutes. Right. And so making sure that they understand what the process is going to look like is really helpful. Um, I have had some of my board members, commissioners or librarians even that participated say, hey, I want to practice so I know what I can cut. Tell me now what I can cut out, right? So that's why it's really helpful to have that practice session. Um, be sure you send out reminders the day before to confirm who is going to come. Again, the, the legislators, they want to know who's in that meeting before they go into that meeting. Um, so make sure you're confirming if there are some of your members of the group that can't attend, you might wanna just interject that because oftentimes the legislator may get in and go, well, there's supposed to be another person here, where are they, <laughs> right? So just, it's handy to know that. Uh, during the meeting, again, keep the tone friendly and, and positive. If the legislator asks specific questions, Deborah mentioned this, Tell them, and you don't know the answer, just say, hey, I'm getting, I'll get, great, I'll get back with you. Who would you like me to contact, right? Get the name and the email address of the aide, because it's probably going to be one of their assistants or aides that's going to be that person you're going to reach out to. If they ask for slides, like in the instance I was talking about with Torrance, they said, hey, if, give us a slide. We'll post it on our social media for you, right? Be sure you follow up immediately with that slide to the person who you've been assigned to speak with. Uh, Crystal, Paul, I think Deborah all said this, do a little research. We're librarians. You could do some research and your board members and commissioners might do some research. They may already have a relationship with that legislator. And so you want to make sure they're that key point person for speaking, because then they can bring that personal level to it, but also um, point out some specific things that they may be able to follow up directly with that legislator on. It's always great to thank our legislators in those meetings for, hey, I know you supported XYZ. I attended your event the other week, and I really found this to be of interest. It's related to libraries. Those types of connections are really important and helpful because then it lets them know that you're supporting them as well as they can support you. Um, and then again, Follow up, follow up, follow up. Be sure you get email and contact information for the aide or assistant that they want you to reach out to. Send a thank you note with your business card, whether that's via email or a print thank you note just to express our gratitude. Um, and so that's kind of my checklist, uh, I think, from A to Z. Oh, also, don't forget to post uh, positive popcorn. I like to call it positive popcorn. Hey, you had a great meeting. We just got out of a great meeting with Senator Lair, right? It's awesome, right? Put it on your social media um, because they love that. And then ask your commissioners, your board members, your staff to share out that information on what you talked about as well because they're advocates and they you never know who knows who. And so having that positive popcorn out there about we just had this meeting, it went great. They, they believe in us, they support us. Uh, that's always really encouraging and engaging for long-term advocacy. That I'll turn it back over to you, Paul. 
Hey, anybody else in the panel want to add anything to those wonderful starting points for how to make an effective day in the district visit? Silence from the panel. All right, we hammered out such a great list. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're long, you kind of covered it. <laughs> Well, Deborah, I know you've done National <laughs> Library Ledge yeah. Day, too. So is there anything, because again, you might do this in person and, you know, kind of, I don't know, do you want to talk a little bit about that? And and kind of, if you are you are in person, is there a difference? Is there, you know, kind of what are the things you want to look for? Well, I think you, you truly, you have covered uh, uh, most of it, you know, um, but the, the one thing I would say is, uh, as Paul mentioned, uh, things will change. So if you have to have a meeting in the hallway, um, make sure you have enough of your points in your head that you don't have to get out the piece of paper or, um, you know, it's a, often it is, it is a conversation. And so um, if you, if you don't have the time to do a run through, to do a rehearsal, just talk to yourself in the mirror make sure that you make sure that you know the words it's not and and if you haven't done it it's you know the first time is a little intimidating and so if you bring someone who's done it before sometimes that eases that eases the path don't be afraid of this though what what um what tom friels the executive director the past executive director of ala used to say is um you know a librarian is worth gold um, but because you're paid to do this, uh, a trustee is worth 10 times that. And, uh, and, and a, a regular person, a patron is worth 10 times that. Um, so make sure that you, if you can, make sure you include all of those voices, whether they're present in the room or not. Make sure you have a story to tell. Um, but the, 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 also the thing that we need to remember is they work for us. Not only are you a librarian, but you are also a voter. And you may be voting in a different district than you're working in. This is, this is, this is a, an incredibly important way for them to learn about what's going on with their people that doesn't have lobbyist money attached to it, that doesn't have big corporate dollars attached to it either. This is a really important service that we are all doing to get in touch with our legislators. They, they really do like it. <laughs> <laughs> they're busy and they're working hard and you know by and large by and large most of them really are trying to do good deeds and it is our uh, we can help them do that because we reach so many people they don't know how interconnected the libraries are to the community so it's it's our job to tell them that and so even if you're an introvert even if you hate talking out you're a champion and so you're not doing it for you nobody's looking at you they're looking at what you represent that's it. In terms of what you're hearing from the panelists in this, let me summarize this from a trainer's point of view. We all know from research that's been done that in any training session, whether it's a half hour, an hour, a day, or a week, that people, if we're lucky, can retain two or three main themes and perhaps two or three subsidiary themes behind that. You're going in for 15 minutes, use that to your advantage. Don't go in with five different things. Have the one thing you want to really talk about, get that across, do it engagingly, have your facts and figures with you, but don't rely on those. Legislative advocacy and advocacy in general works from person to person, story to story. So do what you're seeing in these sessions. You start off with a story that engages people and makes that human connection. If they challenge you, then have your facts and figures ready. But we all know walking in and saying, did you know 5 million children died in the world last year? It's like, I can't even begin to picture five children rather than 5 million. You wanna talk about that one child in that person's district that brings it home to them and says, this is an important issue. And again, be collaborative. You're not going in to raise all kinds of issues about what's been wrong with the system. You want to look forward with some solutions and you want to be part of that solution making process. Say, we have this problem. Here's a story that illustrates it. We want to work with you. What can we do together? Notice that took me less than 30 seconds to say that. And that's what you want to do. Yolande? I was just going to add to that and say, you're absolutely right. And so when I talk about use the CLA, uh, legislative priorities for that year is your template. Your library may not have 
made use of those funds or utilized that. So talk about those points that really are reflective of what's going on at your library and in your community. And there may be some things that aren't on there, but you know that you want to look down the road. It's sort of like Crystal said, planting those seeds of support. So it really is about focusing on what's important to your library. And that's why it's helpful if you have multiple libraries when you meet as a group, because um, in meetings that I've been at, we like we may not have gotten money for a, uh, a mobile uh, bookmobile, but the, there was money avail made available, right? And so the library that got the bookmobile talked about that item. And we talked about lunch at the library and somebody else talked about what they received funding for. So that's really important that you don't have to know everything, but like Deborah said, really have in your mind what that story is and what points you want to get across to people um, as you move forward. And so we have our music back. So <laughs> <laughs> a reminder for a commercial break here. But before we take a commercial break, Gladstone Buckner put a wonderful comment in here in the chat that I want to make sure people have seen. Also adding that there are times when you won't get the legislator, things change at the last minute. You may get their district manager or another staff person who is or is not familiar with libraries. Don't let that throw you. It's a great opportunity to share with someone who may be involved in crafting policy and whose opinion the legislator trusts. And that should end our music. My fingers crossed it. Music will Paul, you're on mute. <laughs> yes. Ah, he's waiting. There we go. I, I love it. I think in trying to figure out what music is coming from, Karen's doing her best to just note any obvious input of sound. And I was the obvious input of sound in that case. The music. It's someone calling in. OK, um, it is somebody calling in. Thank you for the great music. By the way, if you can put the title of that song in there, we'll make sure that we okay. share that out afterwards too and get full credit. It's in Monterey County, San Benito County, or Santa Cruz. <laughs> it's on the top 10 list. Name that song and you win a I'm looking at the area to code. the next Ursula Meyer training okay. session. Okay. Um, that. Um, so would this be an okay book? time to go ahead and share the spreadsheet so we can kind of show people what it might look like to have those overlapping representatives. Um, and then let's see, we can talk about what we'll be providing on the CLA advocacy page. Okay, so here's a spreadsheet that the um, Advocacy and Legislation Committee has been working on with a couple of interns. Um, we've been updating the list of legislators. So assembly districts have changed. We have a lot of new assembly members. And so this will all be the most current list so that when you have access to this, you will be able to see who the assembly person is. We also will be adding representatives and senators. Um, we have then a link to their district maps so you can see their general area who their main contact is for scheduling your appointment. Um, they will move over their mailing addresses if you need that. If they do prefer um, receiving the schedule request through their website, there will be a link to that, a link to um, their full staff list if it's available and bills that they've participated in, as well as library systems that are served. So as you can see, already in these top three we have overlapping counties and library systems um, like sonoma for example so definitely then you'll want to work with your neighboring library systems on a plan um, and and then something that the interns have been doing is specifying what what locations in the counties are actually in their districts and and that might be helpful if this is kind of new information to you on where the legislators are that it's like, oh, okay, so, um, you know, for example, Dunsmuir Beat Branch, um, we know is in this person's district. So we could speak specifically to maybe programming and services that this um, single location does. Um, and then we're also putting some notes about who they are, kind of what their, what their life is like, um, you know, before being uh, assembly person. So, Megan Dahl, her and her husband, who's a state senator, Brian Dahl, um, they are farmers. They own a, a wheat farming business. So 
Um, you know, I was thinking Yolanda, Yolanda and I used to both work up in Nevada County, and there was this um, kind of cool conference that happened up there that was like technology and farming, right? And so if you had something like that going on in your library system, these would be the perfect people to, to talk to about that. So kind of finding that common link and pointing it out. So this um, will be linked on the CLA advocacy and legislation page, uh, the committee page. We will have a template that you can use when you're making that first contact to set up the appointments. Um, also some, some points to start with if you're not sure where, you know, what talking points to start with, some um, general bills and um, things kind of coming up that um, you'll have in your back pocket as well. Wonderful. Questions from anybody on the call at this point, besides where's that music coming from? Well, I was, I was going to hold off on this, but I'll, I'll bring it up now. Uh, Yolanda's been talking about your district and your library and your common, your, your neighboring library. What about us who are unaffiliated people but like to advocate, like me? Uh, how do we get involved in this? Because, um, I mean, be honest with you, if you have a two-person library, I can call the librarian up. But I live in L.A., who in the heck am I going to contact in LA to talk to, to see when they're doing anything? I mean, how, well, how are we doing that in terms of connecting people who are interested in advocacy, but aren't public librarians, frankly, sure. uh, want to help out? Because uh, uh, that's, that's, that's been my concern for years about this. I used to be, I used to do day in the district every year. And then when they stopped, telling me what was going on, I dropped out because I couldn't figure out when to do it. So how, how are we uh, uh, supposed, to, supposed to figure this out if we, um, I mean, that chart's wonderful, but all you have there is the name of a, a, a library. LA Public Library and LA County, Law, uh, County Library are so huge, mm -hmm. I have no idea who to contact. And so, right, and so it really is up to, so a couple of things. So. It is up to the library systems to make that contact, right? Um, and you, I know that you say you're a an individual, um, or if you're in um, a special library or a law library, that you see. So if you look there, okay, I'm going to see who's in in their their region, reaching out to them and to the director, or you know, it depends on on the system. I know LA County, LA City, huge entities. Um, the, the additional thing that, that we can do or the committee can do is request that once their appointment is set up, that we can we can post that so that if any, you know, the date and time and, and a contact person, if you want to be involved, that yeah, is that one kind of extra thing we, we can do. But we also, right, but then we yeah. will depend on, on the library staff involved to let us know. Yeah. Um, you know, and so we you, we can't make appointments for the different jurisdictions right. because we don't know what they're. And you keep talking jurisdictions. It's you're, you're, we're doing districts, and right and or districts. I think that talking jurisdictions keeps it away from people who don't belong in jurisdictions. I'm not in a jurisdiction. I, I'm I'm in I'm in a I'm in three I'm in a congressional district and a mm -hmm. and a assembly and a senate district. But in terms of, you know, I. I, I don't talk to these PL people and do all this sure. stuff. You know, I mean, that's that's my frustration is, is that I'm uh, so talking that language mm -hmm. is it keeps me out of that. And and that that's that's part of my concern, too. Is yeah, we'll be mindful of that. And and really, you know, I'm misspeaking. What I mean is district. What I mean is the lawmakers area, yeah. okay. the lawmakers jurisdiction, not like the L.A. County Library's jurisdiction. OK. Um, and so really, it's about connecting. And there are several ways that this can happen, but connecting with people that are, or, or libraries, whatever type of library they might be in those districts. Right. And I understand from your specific point of where you happen to sit is in, I mean, it's huge it's and overwhelming, huge. right? And, and in years ago, frankly, it was the reverse. I was the appointment person and they'd come to me. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, we made sure that we got the we got the uh, appointments done. 
And I would add that everyone individually, and Deborah, I think mentioned this, you live in that district. So you have the ability to reach out to those legislators at any time on your own. And we certainly, and if you want to sing the praises of your library, and this is great work, and you need to support these, then please do. Um, I know that LA did change, David, how they kind of do. They used to actually do their meetings with other libraries in the their, their uh, districts, um, and they've now gone to kind of doing their own separate meetings um, because they are so big. Um, and so I definitely think, I don't know that they would necessarily invite you to attend that meeting, but I think that, yes, we need to maybe look at ways where you yeah. can participate. Also, um, you know, you can get, a, I'm on every legislative mailing list, like ALA has theirs and their CQ Engage platform will push out anytime there's a big bill coming up that's library related. And so I get those and I usually respond back and write my letter into the legislator individually as a citizen of that district, just to show my support. Um, and I, I want to cut off just a second because, because it, it's still that problem of, of engagement on our part. And if, if, the, if the truth is in big places like LA, I'm, uh, you know, the, an earlier speaker said, you don't want to have too many people making appointments because the problem is they don't know who's doing what and they get confused. And, and so you have that conflict. Because I can, I know I can call up my legislator and make an appointment. And I say, I've got some library issues. They said, yeah, but librarians are coming on Thursday. And I said, oh, really? I'm a librarian and I'm coming on Tuesday, you know, and that's confusing to them. So that's why the coordination is better. It really I'm is, stop. David, I'm the more we can do to have long-term positive relationships, not just between the library reps and the, really the legislators themselves, but also between all of us working together, the, the better chance there is that you won't need to be asking that question because we'll be planning it up front. Anyone else? That's when I think we're hearing you. You might want to mute unless you've got a question for the, the panel. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Oh, awesome. I, have a question. I wanted no, no, I just wanted to respond. Uh, we actually moved to scheduling our own separately because the county has a CO legislative affairs office. And they made it very clear to us that advocacy is handled through that office. So what we did was we started scheduling our own visits and just shifting it to, to almost more of an outreach. Um, we tried it one year with other jurisdictions, but it, it became a thing where it could easily be con confused that we were advocating for certain positions, which we're actually not allowed to do as the library. Um, so that's why we separated our visit. Well, so this is Deborah. So when you meet with legislators, do you ever bring um, non-LA County folks with you. I mean, uh, I, I hate to, I hate to call. No, Deborah, civilian. we don't. Um, we don't. used to do mm -hmm. that when I first yeah. started organizing this. We used to, and then yeah. uh, that whole part of it was clarified. Um, so now, so when we, when we, I think the last time we did it was 2019, because 2020, all of the meetings were canceled. Um, but 2019, when we did the visits, we did those separately, and we would bring um, iPads with different things that we're doing in the system, whether it's lunch at the library programmings, we'd bring materials, et cetera, but we didn't go into advocating for specific positions or things because we just weren't able to do that. So we didn't do it with other jurisdictions. Well, but do you bring, for example, David is a patron. Do you ever bring patrons? We don't bring patrons with us, no. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yolanda, did you want to add something? I just wanted to say thanks, Gladstone. I know. Uh, hello. <laughs> I hope you're doing well. Thank you for chiming in, because mm -hmm. I think that's a great point. But different library systems may have different guidelines that they follow. And so that's where it's really uh, great to hear from a variety of different libraries to understand kind of how they approach advocacy. Um, and so, you know, with a lot of the smaller library systems, they do group together because they don't have someone at that level that an L.A. public or an L.A. county or San Francisco public may have that that actually that's their focus and that's their kind of job. So thank you, Gladstone. 
You're welcome. Got a couple of comments in the chat. One I think has already been made adequately here by everybody on the panel, just repeating that the LA County Library can be a starting point to connect for those who are trying to figure out how to get involved if they're in that area. And we've got a comment reminding us that most legislators understand that they represent communities beyond what falls within the district they're elected to represent. And it's fine to talk about that area and that community. So I think that gets back to this whole misunderstanding we were having about we're speaking jurisdictions this is, as opposed to districts. We're all in this together. We're trying to do what we can to be successful advocates in a positive way to bring about the transformative positive changes that frankly draw all of us to a conversation like this together. That's the whole point of it. As we start to move toward the final section of this, where we're gonna encourage you to put together some sort of a, a rough draft plan for your own day in the district activities, let's prime the pump by asking a couple of questions here. Any of you that wants to chime in either in the chat or audibly, uh, let us know one concrete goal you have for a day in the district meeting that you want to set up with a legislator. Get this so that you start doing your plans and at the same time you seed the thoughts of others who might say, yeah, that's something I can do too. So again, the question, one goal you have in terms of a day in the district meeting, anybody? Yeah, I'll, I'll chime in. I'm gonna uh, talk to my boss, who's our executive director of our, um, agency um, our city council doesn't necessarily get along with all of our elected representatives outside the city so i it's a kind of a, a, a minefield sometimes so i'm gonna set up a meeting with her to discuss you know who i can go see and how to do that so that's my goal wonderful anybody in the panel want to offer any tips as he looks for doing that I would just say that's a great that's great actually um, and and thank you for bringing that up because I think we often forget like we're the library and we kind of operate in our silo sometimes but we are connected to many of us to cities some of us are JPAs but we're also connected to cities and counties and so one of the things that I do as a director and as you're beginning your advocacy reach out to your city and find out what their legislative priorities are and your county, because again, you don't wanna be sort of in conflict. Um, and that's where you do need to know what those other uh, agencies are doing so that we are all kind of advocating for the same things. I know um, my city and county, they do include me on their, hey, this is what our legislative priorities are for this year. Do you wanna add any to that library, even though we're a JPA? And so then I will say, yep, here's our legislative priorities. And um, whenever I'm doing my, uh, my library advisory commission and board meetings, joint powers authority board meetings, I make them aware of the California Library Association legislative priorities. And kind of when we get those news from the capitals, I make them aware of that because then from that, they can also uh, say, hey, that's something we wanna focus on too. And so let's all work together uh, to move in the same direction um, towards advocacy for the greater good. And talking about those legislative goals that CLA has, Crystal and Deborah, do we have those posted on the CLA website at this point? Um, so they are not, and it is due to them not yet being approved by the CLA board. Do we have last year still up there? Yes. So any of you who are looking for some guidance on some of the hot issues, you can look at what we were doing last year. They're not going to change radically, is my they, understanding, no. but there will, there will be some updated things on there. So mm -hmm. use that as a resource in your preparation. Anything to add from you, Deborah, on that whole topic? No, I think we've, I think okay, we've covered it. Another one. Anybody in the call? Another thing that would be one concrete goal you have for a day in the district visit? is our chance to workshop and throw it out there. Let's see where we can go with this so that you walk in with the best prep that you could possibly have. Are you doing, you know, are you doing new things with uh, state funding? Do you want to brag about that? Is there something that you're using as funds for a pilot, pilot program and then you want to expand? Um, are you jealous of something that uh, your library, your library system next door is doing that you'd like to do? Those are the, you know, this is the, um, it doesn't hurt to have an audacious goal. I think I have an um, ambitious goal is hmm. to make our digital library more robust, because at this point, we are very tight with our funding for like purchasing ebooks or e-audios. 
especially for e audience, it's actually a very good long term investment. Like more, more than ninety percent of them, we can own instead of like ebooks. You can only keep for twenty four months at the longest. Mm -hmm. So I really like to have some extra funding to support this um, platform in addition to our regular general fund for materials. So I think also if we can get some extra funding, we can put up some banner on our um, digital library, just saying this is like a special funding from so and so. So can you can you point to things that your um, that your collection your e collection has done for the community? If you can brag about something that it's done, then it's easier to ask for more money for it. Yes, we have. We our the titles are just in such a high demand. We just cannot keep up with um, the, uh, the such a trend. And uh, comparing with neighboring libraries like Santa Clara County Library or S San Francisco, we are very kind of a very, not saying Prince and the Pauper, but at least I think we are in that category. So if we can get some something extra, from legislators, I think that would be great. So Wulan, I think this is where um, I, I've kind of done some of this advocacy work and I think Greg Lucas, and um, that's mm. one of the things where the Palace Project is coming from because years ago when Greg Lucas first became the state librarian, I was at a meeting and he said, this is when I worked for LA County, he says, oh, what should I be doing? What should we be doing? And I said, ebooks for all, <laughs> they cost so much, give us free ebooks, like the state should, should manage that and get us better deals on our contracts because we are such a big state. So this is where advocacy pays off. This is where advocacy rubber meets the road because mm -hmm. I I continue to hound it. Other people started hounding Greg Lucas about it. And so that's kind of where we got some of those things. We got the, the student databases mm -hmm. came out of that kind of advocacy work. And so this is where on the CLA legislative priorities, you know, sort of that ebook question, like, and we've had a lot of discussions and I know we're, we're kind of veering off a little bit, but it's still advocacy. And um, we've, we've really looked at how can we get the publishers to give us better pricing, right? And so that's something, it's a little challenging. Um, and some states are trying to make moves in that direction. And it's gone to the higher level where the Senate or the Assembly are doing some of that legislation. But there's trouble. We, there's, a, there's a, hey, how do we enforce that is the, the challenge. So we are still highly active in advocating in that direction. Um, we're, we're just faced with some challenges, but that doesn't mean we stop advocating. We're going to keep doing it. <laughs> and Great. This is, a, this is a top priority for us um, that we will continue to advocate for, not just in the state of California, but we want to make sure that across the United States, all libraries get better pricing on eBooks because we, we help them sell books. Right. Thank you. I don't know if to a question we'll get in the chat here, because I think it's a wonderful opportunity for us to look at the other side of what we've been talking about. The question is from Hilda. Can our panelists speak about what are the big no-nos when conducting these visits? We already have one response in the chat from someone saying, when conducting visits, do not talk about campaigns or re-election, just policy, not politics. Panelists, what are your thoughts on that one? Um, so I can just jump in. I think you know, it's pretty basic what Alex said, not not to talk about the politics, right? If you when you look at your sheet on who represents your your area, um, you know, they could be Republican, they could be Democrat, they might not um, align with personal feelings or whatever. And so it's really speaking to those commonalities, um, knowing your audience a little bit. So that's why it is good to to do the prep work know who you're speaking to, what they're passionate about. Um, I mean, one maybe hot button example might be, you know, if, if you're in a very conservative area with conservative rep representation, it might not be the best thing to talk about. Um, we're doing drag queen story time. If they, you know, are going to be really kind of against that. So, um, so it's really, 
knowing your audience, staying, staying away from that, that politics and just, and talking about the policy and the support for services and um, what you're doing. And Yolanda and Deborah, I know you have both. Uh, I would also say, however, however, um, if, uh, if you are doing a campaign for a library, you want to make sure that they, that you update them. For example, we're um, building a new Roseland library in a community center up in Sonoma County. And, <clears throat> and, and and our legislative uh, folks have been generous, and so we want to make sure that they they know all of the they know all of the details. Um, we also want to make sure that they know that we're going to be um, that our uh, our passionate um, supporters are going to be uh, running a renewal of Measure Y campaign for us for the library. So you don't want to talk about their politics, but you certainly want to talk about your own campaigns. Anything else for anyone that wants to add responses to that whole question of things we don't want to be doing? I'd say another thing. Oh, sorry, Paul. I was going to say one more thing that can kind of be helpful is to start out with those positive, you know, we're not going in there just to throw hardballs at people. It's really to build the relationship. But it's okay to talk about the reality of things, too. And so I think sandwiching it, right? And, you know, starting with the great things and what we would, you know, love to see more of is this because our community is asking for it, right? Because the community you serve is also the community that votes for them. And so even if it's something that's not quite there yet, I think it's okay to, to bring, bring that up. Great. Let's do a very quick exercise here so that the rubber really hits the road on this. We've been talking theoretically about the things that do that we do on day in the district. And we've also been talking about some of the approaches we take. You heard Yolan give a really nice outline of some of the essentials that go in. Think for a moment about what you want to do before, during, and after the meeting based on everything you've heard during this session. I'm popping into the chat right now a quick kind of bullet point list of things to do before, during, and after. Please take a minute or two, um, respond to any of those for yourself, jot them down on a piece of paper so that in essence, you are creating a draft action plan for yourself. If you can cut and paste that into your own document, that, that gives you an outline for later. But look at that, take a minute or two to brainstorm what you can do so you walk away with some ideas. And then let's share that out so that we get some ideas before we do a wrap on this. We may have a minute or two of silence. I'm going to keep the recording running though in case people have questions they want to ask. But I'm going to go silent for a minute or two to give people a, a quick stab at answering some of those questions to prepare a plan. And I would joke about having some background music, but I don't want it back, so no. <laughs> What I will do for those who are watching the archive version is I'll go over those points. Those of you working, either mute me for a minute so that you can uh, work on this. But those of you that are at home and, and wondering what to do afterwards, before, identify a legislator and a topic or topics to be covered. Identify colleagues whom you will invite to join you. Identify who you'll contact. For example, a legislator's aide, a legislator, or someone else to help set up and to confirm the meeting. Identify information you need to have before attending the meeting. Develop a simple three or four, four point agenda for the meeting. If it's 15 minutes, you wanna keep that very brief as we've said over and over again. During the meeting, pretty simple. Who will lead and facilitate the discussion so you're not talking over each other and determine ways to sit, set up successful follow-up to the discussion. One thing I often talk to colleagues about if there are four or five of us going into a meeting, we designate somebody who is the main facilitator, understanding that everybody's a partner in this, but we also have a very simple innocuous phrase we use so if somebody's going off track the use of that phrase stops that person dead in their track and we get back on track that is a good way to make sure that somebody doesn't go running off using your 15 minutes on one thing that nobody else wants to discuss and afterwards three items that you will complete within the week following the day in the district meeting could be as simple as what yolanda and i think deborah were talking about sending your powerpoint slides to them later using that opportunity, it may have been Crystal who also brought up some of this, decide what you're going to do and then do it in a time frame that's timely and, and effective to keep things going. 
I'll, I'll just add one thing that I thought about as we were kind of going through these. When you're in the meetings with legislators, and this kind of goes to that, yeah, they might not want to, some things they may push back on. Um, I've been in meetings where I've had legislators actually ask, so what other funding sources do you have for that? Because you know, <laughs> this isn't sustainable. And so that's something that you should really think about if there's something like Deborah talked about, hey, we want to do this, this really cool thing that this other library system is doing. And if that's a lot of legislators want to know, is that one time funding you need or is this something I have to, you know, we got to break out some money every year because that also may make a difference in whether they decide to support that item or not when they get in the room with other legislators and are kind of hammering out, well, do we do this or do we do this? Um, so I think that's really helpful as well. If you have a little bit of an understanding about, is this, especially on those big ass, is this long-term funding that you're looking for? Or is this a one-time funding? Hey, we need one-time funding to buy that maker van, right? Or that mobile bookmobile to, to upgrade to an electric vehicle. And, you know, we're meeting the challenges of being sustainable and using clean energy, right? Those are the things. So can you support us on this one-time funding, right? And um, that may be go over differently than something that says, hey, every year we need millions of dollars to do this other program. Um, that is often where they're, they're looking at, hey, which one are you uh, if I have can only support one, how do, how do I make that determination? So it's good to have that background information as well. There's also a wonderful unspoken assumption in there, Yolanda, that I think as well we're pointing out here. And that is, if you go into those meetings saying, we also have these people working with us on this, or we also have these sources of funding, that lets the legislator know you've done your homework and you really are down the road making them a partner rather than the sole provider of this. And it gives them that, that almost political cover, but also the human cover of knowing I'm not in this alone. I was sure to talk through your period of reflection here, but hoping that you have at least have had a chance to think about a couple of these items on this bullet point list of things to prepare before, during, and after. Just some quick share outs here to see what you've got so that A, we nail that knowledge down for ourselves, and B, you've got an action plan that you walk away with. So this is more than just, oh, what a lovely conversation. I'm going back to work. This is the work you're doing. We want you to walk out having felt like this is an extension of what you're doing and you can apply it immediately toward day in the district and everything else you do in your legislative interactions with elected officials. Anybody, things that you've jotted down for yourself to do. Deborah, we need a bigger pencil. Nobody jotted anything down. <laughs> I have a to-do for David. Oh, sorry, David. You're going to email me, right? Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Wonderful. Hey, you know that that Diane, point out. Well, like Diane even... has her hand up. Please go ahead. Diane? You're on mute, Diane. Diane, Diane, you're on mute. mute. There we go. There we go. I'm Thanks. sorry about that. Um, We've all is... done that. <laughs> yeah, this is a really great discussion. I'm in a unique situation in that I just graduated with my MLS and so I'm in between, but uh, um, the, the project that comes to mind for me is during my downtime, I volunteer as a librarian locally during the last campaign to be able to post um, um, full context um, uh, content links for accurate information out there while the campaign was going on without supporting either candidate. Um, and through that, I made a really great, which I wanted to interject where people were saying, how can we connect? I find that the county level is really a good level to start with as well, at least in rural areas, because here I connected with the district chief of staff, who is now the incumbent supervisor for a board of supervisor in district five, Madera County. And I had worked for years with the uh, volunteer, with the, the um, uh, previous board of supervisors. And one of the things that I became aware of was that they're, they are so busy, their calendars are so full uh, that, that they aren't aware of things that are going on. And so when the California State Library Program came through about um, broadband for all, I brought that to the attention of my supervisor and the district chief of staff. Um, the district chief of staff really appreciated that because he was able to move on a serious issue, which is what we have in rural Sierra, Western hills of mountains of Sierra Nevada, 
where, especially with COVID, the lack of broadband really impacted um, the economy with uh, people being able to continue to work remotely, um, as well as students in schools, as well as we don't have equitable access in this area. So there were a lot of students without access to libraries when they shut down or information or their schoolwork. So um, the district supervisor, the chief of staff did, be, did uh, become the supervisor. And so he jumped on board when I sent him the information um, to, for broadband for all program. And so what this uh, is helping me give me the framework for is to follow up on that uh, with the internet provider company, with the county librarian, with the district chief of staff, uh, the new district chief of staff and the new supervisor um, to give them a framework and find out where are we at with this to continue to advocate because I'm a strong advocate for a lot of things library. Um, so I appreciate everything you guys have given, but so I have my contacts of who I would contact. And I think the, the, the three things are where are they at because they had the ability to um, apply for funding. And so that's one of the things that I'm gonna research, find out what the status is on that. And then how can I continue to support them with continuing to move it along? Because with all of the hot topics, um, and the decompression of the campaign um, uh, of those hot topics right now, it's a sensitive time, but this is a really good um, example of how libraries support our communities and they're the hub in rural communities and how they can support our legislators um, who in this example, didn't even know that the broadband for all program existed or that they could do anything about it that would positively help us. So thank you. That's that's my plan at this point. Diane, thank you so much. Anybody else want to toss in an idea of something off that list that they're going to be doing specifically to prepare for day in the district? I'll just jump in. I know I'm going to be preparing because we have some of our um, library commissioners who have expressed that they know some of the new legislators that have just been elected for our area. And so we're going to try and get them involved and have them do a day in the district visit. So we're going to be working towards that. Wonderful. And Crystal, can we um, help people if they're not sure which districts are working together? CLA, we will, the Advocacy Committee, we can help them identify. So Absolutely. Um, don't so, call tomorrow and make an appointment. Make sure that you know which districts are interested in mm -hmm. a specific legislator before um, before you launch into the project. Um, and then do follow up. Yes. Um, those are the two messages. So by Monday, we'll have that spreadsheet live that should have all of the information. Um, I'll put my email address in the chat. As it was mentioned before, I co-chair the Advocacy and Legislation Committee. So we'll be working on this. Um, also, if everybody would like to receive the link, if Paul has the sign up list, we can go ahead and, and send it out to everyone that attended today. Great, I'm gonna put in a couple of links to the resources we mentioned during the uh, session today, the Advocacy Tools page, and also the archive recordings of uh, our YouTube sessions. We'll be updating that with the last few sessions as soon as we can get past a couple of tech problems that we've had over there, but look for updates there. The spirit of this whole series has been that my understanding was Ursula Myers really wanted to see advocacy at, uh, developed among all levels of staff. And that's something that we keep shooting for. We hope that- And civilians. And everybody. We're talking here <laughs> about the California library community in its most inclusive fashion. Thank you. And thank you, Deborah. <laughs> we, we hope that this has been part of that exercise. We hope you'll keep coming back. Hope you'll mention to people that you know these recordings are available for people if they will find this useful and share those with your colleagues. To do a formal wrap here, I'm going to ask each of the panelists to give us a one or two line best tip that you want people to walk away with that will encourage them. Who wants to go first? Keep coming back. It works. <laughs> nice. Don't be afraid. No fear. That's that's mine too. If this is your very first time doing this or it's been a while, you know, it could be baby steps. Dip your toe back in, get it, get it started, learn the process, and then you'll be even more prepared next year. Fantastic. We will stay after we stop the recording in case anybody has some something they want to ask outside of the recording. But before we stop, last shot. 
any questions of things we did not cover that you'd like us to address in the last couple of minutes we have left? Or ideas for next time. Or suggestions for better background music, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> 831, we're looking at you. <laughs> Go I just want to thank everybody for coming today. Um, this is a really great turnout. I've been really dedicated to legislative advocacy um, since, as I mentioned, I started with LA County and was sort of introduced to the advocacy and legislative committee. Um, Deborah Doyle has been just an ins absolute inspiration um, with the work that she has done over the years. And so, you know, if you are interested in becoming uh, active on the legislative and advocacy com committee or you know, CLA, the California Library Association Board. Um, please, I put my num my email in the chat. Please reach out to me. It, this is really works when we have diverse perspectives serving on our committees. And so I just want to uh, invite you all to, you know, reach out for more information if you think you might be interested. Um, because again, this, like, like I said, Deborah is one of my early inspirations on this. And so uh, I probably wouldn't be where I am today without her support and the knowledge that she shared with me, which is why I continue to share with other people. And I'm Crystal and I used to work together. And I, I know Crystal is one of those who I've just reached out to and said, I think this is important. You should do this. You're going to be great at it. And she's been doing a phenomenal job. So um, again, I know many of you out there, I see some of the names who I've worked with. Um, we'd love to see you on the ledge committee, as well as the CLA board, if you've not already served previously. So please do reach out. Um, we'd love to have you uh, provide support for those, both of those groups. And thank, thank you, you for speaking out, David. We really appreciate it. That's very, it was it's very helpful. Can't Absolutely. Good enough. Be persistent on this. Yolanda's told yeah. over and over again a lovely story about how she really tried oh, several times to make herself available, and it took the persistence before yeah. people realized what a gem they were overlooking. So right. if you feel like you're that gem and you want to be out there, do what David did in the call today, do what Yolanda's done over a long period of time, what all of us have done to get ourselves into this lovely community. Yeah. On behalf of CLA, thanks for being with us. I will ask uh, Karen to go ahead and cut the recording now. We'll stay on for Q&A. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day.